Wollaston is a rural parish in the Forest of Dean district of Gloucestershire. It lies on the north side of the Severn Estuary, about five miles from the Welsh border at Chepstow. The centre of Wollaston is just off the main A48 around the Netherend area, where there is a thriving primary school, two pubs, a new memorial hall, a popular skates park, a community orchard and a small post office within the village shop. The village of Wollaston plays a very big part in my very early childhood because this is where my paternal grandmother used to live for a while. And while she was living here, I lived nearby with my mum and dad, so I'm going to be doing a walk around this area today. From the centre of Wollaston, I followed Seven View Road for a short way, before turning off left, angling across a field with a fine view of the Severn ahead. Shortly beyond an old farmhouse, I took the path on the right over a rickety stile to cross an enormous field of maize, the crop encroaching on the path in places. To my right, beyond more arable fields, I could see the wooded ridge around Park Hill. At the end of the field, I reached a country lane, where I went right and then left again on a bridleway which soon became a path running along the edge of another field. As I walked along, I had a fine view of Wollaston Church to the left. St Andrew's Church was assumed to have been built in 1131. However, the old circular churchyard and the nearby Roman road, which ran to the northwest of the church, suggest a much earlier holy site. The tower was originally a low one with a short wooden steeple, but following the granting of a faculty in 1774, it was completely rebuilt. The path ran to the right of the rectory, with its reused 14th century priest stall. I soon came to a footbridge, but the stream it crossed was low enough for me to ford. At the other side, I followed the right-hand edge of a field, going through a gate to slant across a second field. Turning right along a lane, I was at High Wollaston. There was possibly a castle here, the walls of a tower still stand, and there is evidence of medieval settlement in the adjoining fields. Turning left onto a bridleway, I passed High Wollaston Farm, its buildings grouped around three sides of an open courtyard. 
I headed out onto another field, aiming directly for the thin belt of woodland ahead. As the path gradually climbed, the views across the Severn behind me were fantastic. Climbing through the wood for a short way, the path came out at a junction of minor lanes. I took the higher of the lanes to walk through Park Hill Common, settled in the 17th century, but now reduced to a few cottages. Leaving the metalled lane through concrete posts to the left, I pass through some gorgeous oak woodland. The path began to drop steadily as I walked through Wollaston Slade. At the bottom of the descent, I met a roughly surfaced lane where I turned right. The woodland soon ended where I went left at a small pond and crossed the Black Brook, following a path towards the farm buildings ahead. As I reached Seven View Farm, I looked across the Severn, where I could just make out Oldsbury Power Station on the other side of the estuary. From the farm, I followed Slade Road to a junction, curving left onto a narrow lane, signposted to where I was heading next. I soon came to Wollaston Woodside, where the waste land was enclosed in the early 19th century and quickly settled with an increasing amount of stone cottages. Nowadays, some very substantial homes occupy the same area of land. I went slightly left at a T-junction, then right, where I decided to just stop to reflect on where I was. You know, I think Wollaston Woodside is really lovely. It's quiet, it's private, but it's also not far from the nearest amenities if you need them. But more importantly from my point of view, Wollaston Woodside is where my nan lived, my paternal grandmother. Now, I can't remember how long she lived here for, but she lived here with her husband in a bungalow at Woodside, and they were here when I was born, which was in 1966, and that was when I was living with my mum and dad not far from here. 
And I've just got the odd little memory in my mind of coming to Nan's bungalow at Woodside. I can just vaguely remember seeing Nan sitting in the living room and I can remember seeing my cousin Keith, who was my dad's sister's oldest, and he was just over a year younger than me. But I can't remember much else apart from that. But I've just got the odd little memory in my mind of Wollaston Woodside, so it was a nice place that Nan lived in. And uh, I don't quite know why she moved away from here, but it was probably the nicest place that she lived in. It was a lovely little spot. I headed north along the delightful path. Reaching Rose Cottage, I turned left to follow a path into Wollaston Common Wood. The path led out onto a lane at Wollaston Common, which is nearly a mile north of the main village. Here there is a small hamlet of houses and an area of common ground which for the most part of the year is covered in bracken. Well this has been really lovely. A walk around the area where I first lived. Well, there's a little bit more to see, but for the time being, I'll just follow this lane as it leads me back into Wollaston Village. As I headed back towards the main village, I passed the rising sun, which, although I didn't have time to call into today, I did return a couple of days later for a drink. What a lovely village pub, and next time I'm in this area, I will certainly make a point of visiting again. Well, I've made it back to Wollaston Village and it's been a really lovely day, but it's not quite over yet because I'm now about to see the highlight of my day. From Wollaston Village, I had more great views of the Severn as I made my way down to the A48. I turned left and followed it for about half a mile until I came to the next village, a very important village. Alvington lies on the A48 just over two miles from Lydney and about six miles from Chepstow. In its history, the village has variously boasted two smithies, a small brewery, a small engineering works and several shops. Today, Alvington has little in the way of shops and visitors have to travel to Lydney for most services beyond those served by the local petrol station, which acts as the village shop. There are two pubs in Alvington, 
the blacksmith's arms, which dates back to the 19th century in a building that was formerly a smithy, and the Globe Inn, dating back to around 1805. There was a third pub, the Swan Inn, which once contained a mill in its early days, but it now houses a tea room. Since the mid-19th century, Alvington's population varied somewhere between 300 and 500. During the 1960s, the development of a council estate increased the size of the village. There is a strong agricultural influence in the village today, although historically this would have been more evident, and many of the population now work outside of the village and its immediate surroundings. There used to be a village school in Alvington, dating back to around 1850. However, the last remnants of what became Alvington Church of England School closed in 1958. Built by Lantony Priory around 1140, the church was originally named St Mary's, until it took its current name of St Andrews in 1523. In 1858, the church underwent substantial restoration, leaving only one small Norman architectural window to reveal its Norman origins. St Andrews is found on Church Lane, and a village hall was built nearby in 1924. After walking around Alvington, I stopped to reflect on why the village is very important to me. When my mum and dad were married, they lived here. So whilst they were living here, I was born, which makes Alvington my very first home. It's really weird because even though I only lived in Alvington for, cool, it wasn't even three years, I can still remember things. I can remember my dad sitting at a dining table. I can remember sitting on his knee with a melting Kit Kat in my hand. I can remember him building a snowman in the garden. I can remember mum telling me off in the kitchen. And I can remember her sitting in the bedroom with a salad cream bottle on a tray. And I can remember my maternal grandparents sitting in the lounge because for some reason I knew that was the day they were taking me away from there. So that would have been the day that my mum and dad were splitting up. I can even remember, vaguely, the local shopkeeper, and her name was Mrs George. It's weird how I can remember just the odd thing like that. And of course, as I said earlier, I can just remember the odd thing when my nan was living at Williston Woodside. I hadn't quite reached my third birthday when I left Alvington. My mum and dad were splitting up, and I stayed with mum, and that's when we moved to Chepstow to live. I think my dad lived in Birmingham for a while after coming from Alvington. He moved back to the Forest of Dean eventually, but yeah, I think after he left Alvington, he lived in Birmingham for a while. Anyway. But yeah, it's funny how I can still remember certain things about living in Alvington all those years ago. It's nice coming back. It's, it's a nice place. Time to go, sadly. I think I might have a quick half in the glow before I go. But before I do go, actually, I would just like to say hello to Heather and Tommy, and I really look forward to catching up with you both very soon. Bye for now.